Heavenly Father, your name is worthy to be glorified. Your name is worthy to be magnified. Your name is worthy to be lifted up on high. Glorious God, we lift your name on high. We worship you, Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship you, the Holy One of Israel. We worship you, the Great I Am that I Am. We worship you, the Ancient of Days. We worship you, the Prince of Peace. We thank you, the Lamb of God. We thank you, God Almighty, the God that sits above the circle of the earth, the all-powerful God, the all-glorious God, beautiful Savior, Rock of Ages. There is no rock like you. There is no king beside you. You are the Lord and there is no other. Your Excellency, we worship you. Your Majesty, we give you the praise. Who is like unto you? There is no one like you. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, we say to you be all the glory, to you be all the honor, to you be all the adoration. What a mighty God we serve. Blessed be his holy name. We serve a God that is mighty to save. We serve a God that is faithful. We serve a God that is reliable. We serve a God that never fails. We serve a God of all authority. Dominion belongs to him. Power is in his hands. We serve the almighty God. That is his name. Almighty. Mightier than the mightiest. Greater than the greatest. Deeper than the deepest. Wider than the widest. He is the Lord. There is none beside him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. We give him all the adoration. The God that created the heavens and the earth. Who is like him? He is the champion of heaven and earth. He is the owner of heaven and earth. All power is in his hands. Heaven and earth must bow. The Bible says that as long as he is God, he is God forevermore. Every knee must bow before him. And so we bow before his majesty this morning. We bow before his royal highness this morning. We bow before his honorable this morning. He alone is worthy to be glorified. Beloved, it is a good thing for us to give thanks to the Lord because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy to be glorified. To him be all the honor forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, can you see? Man really loves earth. Man loves the world. You know that the earth is loaded with so many beautiful treasures. You find gold, you find mineral resources, you find valuables on this earth. And child of God, when man wakes up every day, he is running to see how he can make profit from this earth. How the earth can be, can be beneficial to him, child of God. Man is always looking for what to acquire on earth because earth is loaded with treasures. Earth is loaded with good things. Beloved, the earth is a blessing to every mankind. It is on earth that we build our houses loaded with beautiful things that God has given man the privilege to enjoy. Remember that he created the earth for me and you to enjoy. What a mighty God. And man is so good in wanting to enjoy the treasures that is on earth. But beloved, do you know that man is, there's something about earth that all mankind must recognize. All mankind must recognize, recognize this truth about this earth that we are in. I want us to turn our Bibles to Psalm 24. And I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 2. Psalm 24, and I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 2. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Beloved, is it in your Bible? There is a great factor that is missing in the life of mankind on earth. Man has forgotten who owns the earth. Man has truly forgotten who owns the earth. Beloved child of God, how are we going to enjoy earth if we fail to recognize the truth about this earth? 
if we fail to recognize the truth about this earth and this world that we are living in, child of God, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's. All mankind needs to know this, that the earth, this earth that is full of treasures, this earth that we rise up every morning, we are looking for how to take out of this treasure and make profit of it. The Bible says that this earth and the fullness, everything in it belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord and everything in it. The Bible did not say some things in it. Everything in it, it belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord, child of God. It is wisdom for all mankind, whether believer or unbeliever. It is wisdom for all mankind, including the devil, to recognize the fact that the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof, everything in it. The Bible says the world and all its people belong to him. All the people on earth, we belong to the Lord, child of God. Do you know how many people have lived on this planet earth? Uncountable, no man can count it. No man can count it, just like no man can count the trees that God has created. Just like no man can measure the waters that God has created. No, so, as much knowing that no man can measure the sand that God has created. Child of God, the gap between God and mankind is an inestimable gap. We cannot measure it, child of God. We can never estimate it. What a mighty God. What a powerful God. The Bible says he laid the earth's foundation on the seas. He laid the earth's foundation on the seas. This earth that we are in, looking for how to make profit from this earth. The word of God tells us that God is the one that laid the foundation of this earth. That laid the foundation of this earth. The Bible says he built the ocean depths. He laid the foundation on the earth. How did he go about it? He first of all built the depth of the ocean. He laid the earth on, on it. What a great God. What a powerful God. What a glorious God. What a good God. Man must acknowledge that the earth did not exist, exist by itself. That earth has an owner. That earth was created. That the things that we see did not just appear from nowhere. God Almighty created it. There is a creator behind it. There is a creator behind it. Look at what the word of God tells us in Psalm 4, Isaiah chapter 45. And I'm reading verse 18. The Bible says, for the Lord is God. He created the heavens and earth and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in not to be a place of empty chaos. And he says, I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. Beloved, did you read it in, the, in your Bible? He says, for the Lord is God. For the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and the earth. He created the heavens and the earth. Do you know how many times God tells us in his word that he created the heavens and the earth? But child of God, do we live in that consciousness? That the heavens and the earth is indeed created by the living God. When we wake up every morning running to take something out of this earth, do we recognize the fact that God Almighty is the one that created this earth? The Bible says that he put everything in place. You see? He put everything in place. You are working with the, uh, with the refinery. You wake up, you go to work. You are making profit. From diesel, you are making profit from gas. Do you know the owner? Do you know the owner? Child of God. You go out, you dig diamond from the ground. Do you know the owner of that diamond? We dig gold. We dig copper. Do we know the owner? The Bible says he put everything in place. Do you see how we live every day? We step out to go and take out of what God Almighty has put in his head. And the, 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 the painful thing is that majority of the people in the world don't recognize the fact that the earth has an owner. That the earth has an owner. And everything we are going after, we are not really the owners of it. Child of God, 
the Bible says that he made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. Meaning that the one that created the earth, he has a purpose in his heart for making this earth. He has a plan. He has an agenda in his head. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no other. There is no other God anywhere. Child of God. God does not have an opposite. There is no other. He say, I am the Lord and there is no other. Child of God, that's the truth. That's the truth. Do you know that God so much wants us to know the truth about this earth? What was the first thing God told us in his word? Turn your Bible to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Turn it. As, what is the first thing that God told us in his word? What is the first thing that God spoke to mankind? Please read for us. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 10, please. Genesis chapter 1, the verse 1 to 10. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God foresaw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day, six. And God said, let there be a feminine in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made a feminine and divided the waters which were under the feminine from the waters which were above the feminine, and it was so. And God called the feminine heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. The verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering water and the gathering together of the waters called his seas. And God saw that it was good. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us just stop there. You can read the whole chapter. Beloved, think about it. The first thing that God told us in his word is the story of creation. It's the story of creation. How the world began and how everything started. Do you think that God talks anyhow? God has a reason for introducing this to us as his first word in the Bible. Because we are living on earth. God wants us to know the story of this earth. Why? So that we will know how to live on earth. So that we will know how to live on it. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That's the first word that God Almighty spoke to mankind in his word. That means that it's very, very important. That the first word from God to man is the fact that he, God, created the heavens and the earth. What a mighty God we serve. What a powerful God. The Bible tells us that the earth was formless. It was empty. Darkness covered the deep waters. Can you see? The earth was formless. The gold was not there yet. The diamond was not there. The copper was not there. The gas was not there yet. Child of God. The crude oil wasn't there. Everything was in a mess. The earth was formless. How did the earth take its shape? How did everything come about? The Bible says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. The Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters and he began to speak. He began to speak. He began to speak as he spoke. Heaven and earth bowed before him. Things began to order according to the spoken word from the mouth of God. The Almighty said, let there be light. Up to today, no force has been able to turn off that light. He saw that the light was good. He took his time to create earth, to make sure that everything on earth is good. That's the story of the beginning. That's the introduction of earth that God was giving to mankind. A very, very important thing. A very, very important message in the heart of God that he had to make that his first word to mankind. He 
his first word to mankind gave us a picture of everything. He did not keep the details from man. God did not keep the details from man. Let me read Genesis chapter 2 and I read from verse 15 to verse 17. The Bible says that the Lord God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruits of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruits, you are sure to die. What happened there? God gave man permission to be on it. God is the one that puts man on it. Beloved, you didn't just appear here because you want to be here. Me and you, we are here because it pleased God that he will put us in his earth. Learn something. Let me also learn something from the word of God. When God put man on the earth, do you know what God said in his word? He gave man instruction. He gave man instruction. The Bible says the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend it and watch over it. You see, God put man here for a purpose. To tend it and to watch over it. And so, child of God, the reason why you can rise up every morning and go and dig treasure from the earth is because God permitted it. It's because God told man, tend it. It's because God told man, enjoy it. Because God also spoke to man in that Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 and uh, to verse 17. He says, but the Lord God warned man, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. Why are we able to enjoy the treasures of the earth? Because God Almighty in the power of his word has given us permission to eat from the earth. He gave us permission to eat from the earth. That's why you can go as a fisherman to the sea and you can catch the fishes and sell and make profits. That's why you can dig the ground, build your house on it. You can go to the rock, break it, take treasures from it. Why? God permitted man. That's why. It's not because man is powerful. It's not because man can do it. It's not because you have money in your pocket. It's because the Lord spoke it. It's because the Lord permitted it. But do you know that the owner of the earth is conscious of his earth? That when he gave man permission, he also warned man right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. To show that the maker of heaven and earth has made an investment. And child of God, he is looking. We can see that from the story of creation, we see how powerful God is. We see how limitless God is. We see from the story of creation, how that the word of God is powerful. How that the word of God is seriously serious. We see from creation, it shows to us that God has total control over this earth. It shows to us that earth obeys the commands of God. Because when God began to separate light from darkness, they did not contend. Everything that God created was so quiet, obeying quietly. Because earth recognizes the authority of God. Earth recognizes that it did not exist by itself. That's why the sun has not fallen down from where it is. It knows that it has an owner. You see... The story of creation talks to us about obedience of God's word. That when God spoke, there was no contention. That when God spoke, everything just fell in place. Darkness did not say, oh, I don't want to be black. Everything just fell in place, child of God. The sun did not say, how can I be the only one shining all over the earth? All of creation questioned God. Why? Unquestionable, he is the Lord. Unquestionable, he is the Lord. Everything is supposed to just follow as he has spoken. The landlord of heaven and earth. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God, child of God. He is a glorious God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified. We give him the praise. Earth recognizes that it has an owner. God's word is the final word. Earth obeyed it. Let's go back to Isaiah 45 where we read. 
Beloved, we want to see something from God's word. Isaiah chapter 45. And I am reading again. Isaiah 45. And I'm reading from verse 18 to verse 19. It says, For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and the earth, and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper in obs obscurities in some dark corner. I would not have told the people of Israel to seek me if I could not be found. I, the Lord, speak only what is truth and declares only what is right. The perfect God. The God that speaks the truth. The God that declares what is right. Child of God created me and you as his children so that we will seek him. Because the honor of heaven and earth can be found. He is not missing. He wants us to recognize the honor of earth. So even after creating earth, creating mankind, he made himself accessible to us. And he instructed us to seek him because we can find him. Because he knows that for us to live in this earth and enjoy this earth, we need to have a relationship with the creator of the earth. We need to have a, a relationship with the creator of the earth. Because child of God, were you there when he laid the foundation of the earth? So even when you want to dig the treasures from the depth of the earth, don't you think that the maker of the earth, the one that lays his foundation, has something to say about it? Has something to say about it? Even when we want to dig, don't you think that the owner of it has a quantity he wants to deliver per time? And so he made himself accessible to us. So that we can come to him, relate with him, enjoy him, and enjoy the blessing of the earth. And enjoy the blessing of the earth. But child of God, what is happening on our earth? What is happening on our earth? Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 22 to verse 26. He said, God sits over the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root. Then he blows on them and they wither. The wind carries them off like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Ask the Holy One. Look up into heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after the other, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Do you see? He sits above the circle of the earth that he has created. He sits above it as the creator, child of God. The people, me and you, we are just like grasshoppers on the earth before him. And he gives the command, child of God, the one that tells man how long we can live on earth. Do you see that our life on earth is based on how, how, how long he permits us to live on earth. You see? If he says your portion is 100, child of God, you can't do more than 100. He gives us that permission. He determines our life. Our stay on earth. He has the power. The word of God tells us. That he is the God that spreads the heaven like a canopy. And makes it stand from it. He judges the great people of the world. You see. The owner of the world has control over this earth. He judges everything that we do on his earth. Why won't he judge his child of God? Are you the owner of the earth? Are you not making profit from the earth? Look at the air that we are breathing in and out so freely. How much are you paying for it? And you don't want to give account. You grow. You are so beautiful. You think you created yourself. Don't you know that the one that gave you that beauty has a purpose for making you like that? Child of God, even that beauty, you are going to give him account for it. You are going to give him account for it. We are eating. You eat rice today. You eat burger. You eat all manner. 
You eat and eat and eat of the treasures that is in the earth. And you don't want the one that, is, that, that has planted it and given it to you. You don't want him to ask you questions. Is it possible like that? You to think about it. Is it good like that, child of God? We drive on this earth, build on this earth. Your mansion is so big, only you, you live in eight bedroom. Only you, and you sleep in all the rooms. You drive 20 cars. And you don't want the one that owns the earth that you dug treasure from, God the money, and built all these things. You don't want him to ask you questions. Who are you? Beloved, calm down, calm down. Let us tell ourselves the truth. Let us reason well. Because if we reason well, we will acknowledge him. Let us learn from Nebuchadnezzar, who thought that he could live, who thought that he could enjoy himself, who thought that it was by his power that he got everything that he got. The owner of the earth said, let me teach you something. What did he do to Nebuchadnezzar? He turned him into an animal to go and live with the animals in the bushes for him to know that God could have created him as a dog. God could have created him as, as, as a goat. God could have created him as a rabbit. But in his mercy, he made him a great king. He made him a great king and he did not recognize God. What happened? The owner of the heavens and the earth judged him. What about Herod? When he sat on the throne and refused to give the glory to God, what happened to him? Worms ate him up. Go and read it. It's in your Bible. These are unbelievers. Yet, as long as they lived on earth, the owner of the earth has control over this earth. Child of God, the master wants me and you to know that he is the owner of this earth that we are living. Satan did not create it. As he is running to and fro, let him know that the wind carrying him, he didn't create it. You see, he didn't create it. He is there, landing and making trouble everywhere. Did he create it? Satan, did you create it? He did not create anything. And so, let's stop thinking that we can run to him to bless us. For those that know how to go to shrines, go, know how to go to ritualists to get money, to get power. Know that Satan is living a borrowed life. He didn't create anything. He didn't create anything. There is an owner of all this that we are seeing. God Almighty. He is the owner of his earth. He is the owner of his earth. Do you know that God looks down upon the earth to examine what happens on earth? Do you know something that God is not concerned about what happens on the earth? Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. And let's see something in God's word. Genesis chapter 18. Let's look at God's word. And I'm reading from, from the New Living Translation. Genesis 18. I'm reading from verse 20 to verse 21. Listen to God's word. The Bible says, Then the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because, of their, because their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard it. If not, I want to know. Child of God, did you read it? Sodom and Gomorrah. What was happening there? God was hearing and seeing it. And so what is happening in your city? What is happening in your village? God is seeing it. When he wanted to attend to Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I have had the outcry. I have had the outcry. The Bible says it was the Lord that was speaking to Abraham. He said, I have had a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sins. You see? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I will live as I like. God is hearing and God is seeing it. God is hearing it. When it got so loud, God Almighty spoke to Abraham. I'm going to Sodom and Gomorrah. I've heard so much from that place. I want to go and see it. I want to go and visit it. How was the visit? How did God visit Sodom and Gomorrah? God visited Sodom of, uh, and Gomorrah as a God of fire. He visited it powerfully. Fire. He visited it. When we read it, we think that oh, he just wants to go and see it. He went to see it in judgment. And when he saw it, instead of rainfall, it was fire fall. And that land never recovered from it. And so, child of God, God sees what happens on earth. God supervises what happens on earth. God monitors what happens on earth. 
God has invested in the earth. He is looking at his investment. That's why he told Abraham, he said, I'm going there. I'm going to see their actions. If it's as wicked as I've had, I want to know. Do you see? That God examines to know the depth of our actions. The same thing happened in Genesis chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 5 all the way to verse 8. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was constantly and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had even made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Child of God, do you see how God looks at it? Do you see that God really scrutinizes the activities on it? God Almighty said, the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on earth. So, child of God, this was the time of Noah. Let God look down, examine our earth today. What do you think is happening in his heart? What do you think is happening in the heart of God? In Noah's time, he looked down. He saw the extent of wickedness. And he said, I'm going to visit mankind. In fact, I am sorry I made them. Do you see that God has an expression? God judges the activities on earth. He supervises everything happening, happening on his earth. And he makes his decision based on our action. And in that time, when the earth was so wicked, but not as wicked as our time, God said, we wipe all of them up and we destroy everything. Did he not do it, beloved? He, did he not do it? He can create it all over again. Can you see? That God created this earth even more than once. He destroyed everything. Apart from a man and his family that found favor before him. God, so mighty, so powerful, so fearful. Finished the whole family on earth, left only one seed. He left a seed, he left a seed. He came to the animal kingdom, he left a seed, left a seed. He left the seed, destroyed every other thing. What a great God. Destroyed every other thing. Why? Wickedness. Yet, their wickedness is not as great as the wickedness of our time. You can imagine if God looks on earth, don't you think he will vomit? He can't even fathom the depth of wickedness that is on earth. It is unimaginable. So if God looks at our earth, beloved, what do you think is in his mind? Meanwhile, God's word makes it clear to us in Genesis 8, 22, verse 22, that as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. What does that mean? That everything we plant on earth, we will harvest it. That's what it means. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time. You will plant, you will harvest. You will plant, you will harvest. There will be a time. It will be cold. It will be hot. It will be summer. It will be winter. Planting and harvesting is upon the earth, child of God. It's upon the earth. But beloved, let's come down to what is happening in our world today. All of a sudden, our world has changed. Things have taken a drastic turn. Since COVID came, the world has changed to another dimension. What is COVID? Sickness, disease, death. One virus. And the whole earth is in confusion. The whole earth don't have answer. Beloved, millions have died. Child of God, do you know what is happening? Turn your Bible to Haggai chapter 2. And I'm reading verse 6. The Bible says, for this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. In just a little time, I will again shed the heavens and the earth. And the oceans and the dry land. Let me take just the first line of verse 7. I will shake all the nations. What is happening on earth? Child of God. Shaking is going on. Shaking is going on. God is doing what he said he will do. 
God is doing what he said he would do on his earth. He said in a little time, he will again shake the heavens and the earth. God is shaking the heavens. God is shaking the earth. God is shaking the nations of the world. Why is he shaking it? The earth has an owner, child of God. The earth did not create itself. The owner is shaking it. The owner is shaking it. That's what's happening. The owner is shaking it. The owner is using this shaking to talk to mankind, child of God. The owner is talking to all mankind. He is shaking it to get our attention, child of God. He is shaking this world so that, beloved, we can come to our senses. He is shaking it because he spoke to us in his word in Matthew chapter 7. And I am reading Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on a bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Child of God, the rain is upon the earth. The flood is upon the earth. The wind is upon the earth because the owner of the earth is shaking the earth. And beloved, as he's shaking the earth, it's only the unshakable that will remain. It's only the unshakable that will remain. Our foundation will determine whether we will be able to withstand the shaking that is upon the earth. Child of God, the house that is built upon the rock is the only one that will be able to stand, will be able to bear under this shaking from the Most High God. The honor of heaven and earth is shaking the earth. The honor of heavens and earth has released the boundaries of the sea, child of God. You can see what is happening around. All manner of flooding, all manner of tsunamis, all manner, all manner of earthquakes happening around the world. Child of God, the Most High say, once again, I will shake the heavens and the earth. He is doing it. What a powerful God. What a great God. What a mighty God. What a glorious God. What a powerful Savior. The Ekweme. When he says it, he does it. When he says it, he does it. Beloved, and he is saying that is only the house that is built upon him, the solid rock, that will be able to bear his shaking. Child of God, is your house, is your life built upon Jesus Christ? The one that is doing the shaking? Only the one that has the foundation of, of Jesus will find favor before God, just like Noah did. Beloved, hearing the word of God and respecting the word of God, obeying it is what defines us as being built on the solid rock. Because even the devil knows that he is God. It is our respecting the word of God that makes us stand on a solid rock. Because the word of God is that rock. Jesus is the solid rock. He said, if any man hears my word, if anyone listens to my teachings and follow it, he's a wise person. And so, child of God, if we live on earth and we listen to the word of the creator of the earth and we follow it, we are wise. But if we are on earth and we despise the word of the one that created the earth that is carrying us, and we despise the one that created the air that we are breathing in and out, child of God. We despise the one that created the water we are drinking. We despise the one that gave us our two legs that we can walk. If we despise him, we are foolish. And so look at the earth. How many foolish people do we have on it? Can you see that the earth is full of foolishness? Child of God. God is angry with the inhabitants of the earth because of the wickedness of mankind and the disobedience of the people of God. I will repeat it again as the Holy Spirit has asked me to pass his message on that he, God Almighty, is angry with the inhabitants of the earth because of the wickedness of man and the disobedience of the people of God. Of the people of God. Beloved, 
Look at Jeremiah. Please read for us. Jeremiah chapter 25 from verse 15 to verse 26, please. Jeremiah 25, the verse 15 to 26. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink, and be moved, and be mad, because of the soul that I will send among them. Then took I the cup of the Lord's hand, and made all the nations to drink, unto whom the Lord has sent me, to wit Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, as hasten, and a curse, as it is this day. 19. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azar, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod. 21. Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidion, and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea, Dadan, and Temer, and Bas, and all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, 25, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of Mid, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the kings of Shashas shall drink after them. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Child of God, to make it clearer to us, let me just read verse 15 from the New Living Translation. It said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says to me. Take from my hand the cup filled to the brim with my anger and make all the nations to whom I send you drink from it. The cup of God's anger. The nations of the whole world is drinking from that cup. If you read further down, God sent him to different nations, the Arabic nations, to different nations, the kings of Babylon. Then he says, all the kingdoms of the world. What was the message? Give them the cup of the anger of God. Bring it down to our time. Is there any nation in the world that is not affected by the troubles that have befallen it? One, vario, one, one, one virus is shaking the whole world without solution. Businesses are failing. Countries are closing its borders. Restrictions of movement, death all over the world. Child of God, the nations are drinking from the cup of the anger of God. That is what is happening. That is what is happening. Whether you believe it or not. That is what is happening. The whole world is drinking from the cup of the anger of the Most High God. God is angry. God is angry. God is angry. Child of God. Verse 17 says, It's, let me even read it from verse 16. He said, when they drink from it, they will stagger. Crazed by the warfare, I will send against them. Is, is, I don't know. Is the nations of the world not staggering? Confusion everywhere. Child of God. Confusion everywhere. Staggering under the influence of the anger of God. Suffering under the influence of the anger of God. He says, so I took the cup from the Lord and made all the nations drink from it. Every nation to which the Lord sent me, I went to Jerusalem and to the other towns of Judah and their kings and their officials drank from the cup. A sickness that does not know rich, neither does it know poor. Child of God. A sickness that does not, re re that does not respect the, the, the borders of the nations of the world. A sickness that doesn't even know children. Child of God. The whole world is drinking from the cup of the anger of God. I want to read it from verse 27 to verse 29 of Jeremiah chapter, 27, chapter 25. 
the Bible says, This then the Lord said to me, Now tell them, This is what the Lord of heaven's army, the God of Israel, says Drink from this cup of my anger, get drunk and vomit, fall to rise no more, for I am sending terrible wars against you. And if they refuse to accept the cup, tell them the Lord of heaven's army says, You will have no choice but to drink from it. I have begun to punish Jerusalem, the city that bears my name. Now should I let you go unpunished? No, you will not escape disaster. I will call for war against all the nations of the earth. I, the Lord of heaven's army, have spoken. Authority has spoken. Champion has spoken. The master has spoken. God Almighty has spoken. The owner of the earth has spoken. The unquestionable one has spoken. The one in whose power no man can question. Unquestionable he is the Lord. He has spoken. That whether man likes it or not, man will drink of this cup of anger. That God is angry. Compare our time to Noah's time. Wickedness is time. How many raised to power infinity? Child of God. How do you think that God's judgment will be upon the earth? All of a sudden, the world has turned. All of a sudden, the world has come. Do, do they have the solution? They say, take vaccine. Those that are taking it, they are taking it. They give another one. They give another one. They are taking it. They are catching the virus. Confusion everywhere. No solution. Today, they say it's A. Tomorrow, they say it's M. Confusion. Beloved. Can I read further? I have to read further. Jeremiah chapter 25. And I am proceeding again from verse 30. The Bible says, Now prophesy all these things and say to them, The Lord will roar against his own land from his holy dwelling in heaven. He will shout like those who tread grapes and he will shout against everyone on earth. Did you hear it? That God Almighty will shout against everyone on earth. God is angry, child of God. The Bible says he will, his cry of judgment will reach the ends of the earth. For the Lord will bring his case against all the nations. He will judge all the people of the earth, slaughtering the wicked with the sword. I, the Lord, have spoken. Did you see that God is slaughtering? Let's go on. He said this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look, disaster will fall upon nation after nation. Great wild wind of fury is rising from the most distant corners of the earth. Beloved, is it not happening? Is disasters not falling nation to nation? Are you not reading the signs? Can't you see the famine? Can't you see the earthquake? Can't you see the trouble? Can't you see the confusion? Disaster. Let's go on. Verse 33. In that day, those the Lord has slaughtered will fill the earth from one end to the other. No one will mourn for them or gather up their bodies to bury them. They will be scattered on the ground like manure. Some people say God is too, is too kind to do this kind of thing. This is the most high God speaking. If you know him as a lamb, know him as a lion. Know him as a lion. Know him as a judge. Have a balanced knowledge of God. That is what makes us to fear him. If you see him as that baby in the manger, remember he's coming with the eyes of fire. Child of God, God is God. God, his judgment is fierce. He is the one that killeth and he also makes alive. Let us fear God. He said he's going to fill the world with dead bodies so much that there will be, there will be no one to even mourn or bury people. What a great judgment that is upon the earth. Are we not seeing the signs, child of God? Are we not seeing the signs all around us? Oh, child of God, are you living in denial? Are you living in denial? Are we not seeing the signs? That mortuaries cannot even contain the dead bodies? Can't you see that mass burials are going on? Can't you see that people are even dying? Nobody is even gathering in some places. There is no gathering for funeral. Read the signs. He says, verse 34, Weep and mourn, you evil shepherd. Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. 
The time of your slaughter has arrived. You will fall and shatter like, fra like fragile verse. You will find no place to hide. There will be no way to escape. Listen to the frantic cries of the shepherd. The leaders of the flock are wailing in despair. For the Lord is ruining their pastures. Child of God, pastor, bishop, reverend, priest, man of God, woman of God. Beloved child of God, did you read that judgment is coming upon the shepherds of God's people? Of God's people. Leaders, spiritual leaders, judgment is coming. The word of God says weep and mourn, you evil shepherd. If you are an evil shepherd, begin to weep, begin to mourn, because God said he will shatter you like a verse that just falls down and everything is broken, crushed. That's what God said he would do to evil shepherd. He said the time of your slaughter has arrived. The Lord, are you hearing the word of God? Evil shepherd that is misleading the flock of, people of, of God, leading the people of God to hell, not Telling them the adulterated word of God. The Bible says that your day of slaughter is coming. God is the one that is slaughtering this evil shepherd. And it's happening. And beloved, expect more. The judgment of God has no respect for any man. When we obey God, we will enjoy his benefits. But when we disobey God, we cannot es escape the consequences of the judgment of God. The Bible says, the time for your slaughter has arrived. You will fall and shatter like a fragile vase. He says, you will find no place to hide. There will be no way to escape. Listen to the frantic cries of the shepherd. The leaders of the flocks are wailing in despair. For the Lord is ruining their pastures. Has it not started? Are you not seeing the signs? The church gates are now being closed. It is it's closed. Go home. The gates are closed. Time is coming. It has started. That you don't have the vaccine, you cannot be in the church building. They count how many people should be there. Can you not read the signs? Beloved, the word of God says that the shepherd of God's people will be judged so terribly by the Lord. And so, beloved child of God, if you, have the, if you are pasturing God's people and you are not leading them to heaven, there is fire on the mountain. Disaster, judgment has come. Pain has come. God Almighty himself has come to fight you. He has come to fight you. Beloved, he has come to fight you. All that you are giving the people of God prosperity message, teaching them how to how how how, how to harvest the world as if beloved the earth is the promise that God has for us. Earthly minded Christians, there is fire on the mountain. The most high God has come to fight his own people. Child of God, the Bible says peaceful mildews will be turned into wasteland. By the Lord's fierce anger, he has left his den like a strong lion seeking his prey. And their land will be made desolate by the sword of the enemy and the Lord's fierce anger. Beloved, the Bible says that God has left his den like a strong lion seeking his prey. God has left his den like an angry lion, child of God. He says it's by the, the sword of the enemy he will destroy. That's why you see Satan is roaming about doing all manner of disaster. It's because God has allowed him. The sword of the enemy. You see the wickedness in the heart, heart, heart of, of mankind. Devices all means of evil. It's because God will use the sword of the enemy. God will permit the enemy. That's why he's roaming about doing what he's doing, child of God. Beloved, with all this... That is going on. What manner of people do we ought to be? If we are wise people. What do we do at such a time like this? What is the solution child of God? The Bible says. That Noah found favor. Before God. At that time. During that time of his judgment. What did Noah do that he found favor before God? What did Noah do? Child of God. 
Noah was a righteous man. If you read Genesis 6, verse 8 to 9, you will see what saved Noah. That is the only key, child of God. That is the only key. That is the only key. It is righteousness that will deliver us. It is righteousness that will cause us to escape the judgment of God that is upon the earth. I am reading Malachi chapter 3 from verse 16 to verse 18. The Bible says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared God and always thought about the honor of his name. There will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's army, on the day when I act in judgment, there will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve God and those who do not. Child of God, is it in the Bible? Is it in your word? That is all that will save us. The word of God says, those who feared God. The fear of God. The fear of God. The fear of God. Those in his presence. Are you in the presence of God? Are you having personal intimate relationship with Jesus? Is he your Lord and your master? Do you go to his presence every day? Do you hear him? Do you obey child of God? That is what will keep us. The Bible says these are the ones that will be his people. He said on the day when he acts, these ones will be his special treasures. So, he is acting. He is acting now. He said, He the Father, we only spare the obedient child. He the Father, we only spare the obedient child because we are all children of God. He made us. But only the obedient child will be spared. That's what the word of God says. The house that is built upon the solid rock, that's the one that when the wind came, the flood came, the storm came, it remained standing, child of God. The word of God says, he will make a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Child of God, there is still opportunity for us to turn from our wickedness and face the Lord. Because when we turn to him, he is a merciful God. When we turn to him, he will spare us of his judgment. Beloved, why not turn to him today? Is Jesus your Lord and your master? If Jesus is not your Lord and your master, why not cry before him today and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and my personal Savior. I receive you today. Ask that the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, from today I want to know you better. Teach me as I sit at your feet. Reveal Jesus to me and give me the grace to follow you in obedience. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved, if you have prayed this prayer, congratulations to you. More grace, tarry, tarry, keep tarrying. Jesus is coming soon. Blessed be the name of the Lord.